Have you ever suffered from odd sensations in your feet or hands that feel like you're wearing socks or gloves when you're not? Is it too painful to wear your favorite shoes? Has it felt like there are ants crawling on your feet or legs or like you're walking on marbles, but when you look down, there's nothing on the floor? These symptoms might be a sign that you have peripheral neuropathy. You definitely want to watch this video because it will help you understand all of the weird and crazy, not to mention painful sensations you've been experiencing, and it will allow you to regain hope that you can recover from this. Coming up. <laughs> 24 million Americans currently suffer from this disabling condition called peripheral neuropathy. Once upon a time, it was a rare condition that only affected the elderly, but now it's quite common. If you're new to my channel, click on the subscribe button for up-to-date and accurate information on peripheral neuropathy and what you can do to overcome it. Also, don't forget to click on the bell so that you can be notified when I publish new content. Now, let's dive in. Do you know that one in 13 people will develop peripheral neuropathy in the US? In fact, it's among one of the top six chronic diseases that affect Americans. So let's take a look at where it lands. The number one disease that affects the most Americans is diabetes, affecting 34 million Americans. Second is heart disease, affecting 30.3 million Americans. Number three on the list is peripheral neuropathy, affecting 24 million Americans. After that, we have COPD, affecting 16.9 Americans, Alzheimer's, affecting 5 million Americans, and cancer, affecting 1.6 million people. I find that to be absolutely mind-blowing. The fact that there are 20 times more peripheral neuropathy sufferers than people who are afflicted with cancer, that is just astounding. Well, let's talk about what these nerves are and how they function. The first thing that's important to know is that our bodies are made up of two parts for our nervous system. First, we have the central nervous system, which is made up of your brain and your spinal cord. And second, we have the peripheral nervous system, which is comprised of all the other nerves. So what is peripheral neuropathy? And can you guess which nervous system it falls into? Leave me a comment below and tell me which nervous system you think it belongs to. Well, here's what we do know. The word peripheral neuropathy is sure as heck hard to pronounce, but let's look at the breakdown of this word. The word peripheral means situated on the edge or the outermost border. In this case, it relates to being outside of the brain and spinal cord. The word neuropathy breaks down to two parts, neuro and pathy. Neuro relates to nerves. Pathy means disease or damage. When you put it all together, peripheral neuropathy means damage to the nerves that lay outside of the brain and spinal cord. So exactly which nerves are we talking about? We're talking about the nerves that run to your upper and lower limbs. So that would be your feet and your legs or your hands and your arms, and also the nerves that go to internal organs. So to give you a better understanding, let me explain how these two systems work together. Think of your central nervous system as being the central hub for a train station or the control center. Trains arrive and leave from this hub. The trains represent the informational signals from your brain that travel to the rest of your body. Your peripheral nerves are the tracks that the trains or the signals travel along to go from one station to the next. This is how your brain sends information to your feet, and then your feet will send the information back up to the brain. Make sense? In the peripheral nervous system, you have peripheral nerves with varying functions. There are nerves that control your muscles, and these are called motor nerves. Nerves that help you identify sensations called sensory nerves. And then you have nerves that go to your internal organs called autonomic nerves. And they control functions like blood pressure, heart rate, sweating, or bowel and bladder function. These nerve fibers are surrounded by an insulating layer called myelin. And the myelin acts as a protective layer around the nerve fibers. Think of an electrical wire with the plastic casing on the outside holding in the many wires inside. But the myelin also serves for more than just protection. 
it also helps transmit very fast electrical impulses to and from the brain. The speed of these impulses is extremely important because if they're slowed down or impeded, then the messages get distorted. That's one of the ways neuropathy symptoms develop. Now, these nerves, the motor, sensory, and autonomic, will be further classified by their size. So they'll either be classified as large nerve fibers or small nerve fibers. Here's the difference between the two. Large nerve fibers are for the most part motor nerves and they have a very thick coating of myelin around them. They control the strength of your muscles, they maintain your balance, and they allow you to know your body's position in space. So here's what I mean by that. When we're dealing with these large nerve fibers and they're healthy and intact, you can close your eyes and touch your finger to your nose. You'll also be able to maintain your balance when your eyes are closed without falling over. Loss of balance is huge for neuropathy sufferers and it's the most common cause of falls. This can be very dangerous because falls are the leading cause of death amongst the elderly. In fact, 87% of all fractures among people 65 or older are due to falls. And one out of five seniors will die within five years following a hip fracture. So when the large nerve fibers get damaged, the symptoms people will experience very often can be muscle weakness and possibly muscle atrophy or loss of muscle. Lack of coordination and balance, numbness, muscle cramps, twitching, or restlessness in the legs, dull, achy pain that's sometimes unrelenting, and loss of reflexes, especially in the ankles. Now, let's take a look at the small nerve fibers. They are primarily sensory nerves, so that means they allow us to feel sensations like touch, pressure, vibration, the position of your limbs, temperature, and pain. When a peripheral neuropathy sufferer has sensory nerve damage, it can result in the inability to differentiate between hot and cold. For example, I had a patient who walked outside barefoot in the summer and burned the soles of his feet because he couldn't feel how hot the pavement was. Here's an important side note that I want you to make sure you take note of when you suffer from nerve damage in your feet. Don't ever, ever walk barefoot. It can be extremely hazardous to you. I just told you about the story of my patient that burned the soles of his feet on the pavement. Well, I had another patient that was walking barefoot in his home and stepped on his wife's sewing needle. It penetrated directly into the bottom of his foot and he never felt it. His wife noticed that he had a long piece of thread sticking to the bottom of his foot. So when she went to go check it, she noticed that there was a needle attached to it that was embedded deep within that foot. So there was a trip to the emergency room. So please do not walk barefoot foot, especially if you're experiencing numbness in your feet. Let's recap the symptoms of people with um, small nerve fiber sensory damage. They may feel what's called a stocking and glove sensation, meaning they feel like they have socks or gloves on when they don't have any on. They may feel numbness in the feet or legs or in the hands. They can feel burning pain. They may feel pins and needle sensation. And we already mentioned the inability to feel cold or hot. They can also have increased sensitivity to touch. So we talked about uh, the people who can't tolerate bed sheets on their legs or may not even be able to tolerate the fabric against their own skin. As a matter of fact, I had one patient who would constantly walk around shirtless because it was just too painful when that fabric rubbed against his skin. He said his friends would call him Tarzan. Other people may experience creepy, crawly sensations. In fact, my own mother would describe her pain as feeling like she was being bitten by a huge colony of fire ants. Some people feel like they're walking on marbles or on stones. Others may have an electric shock-like sensation that many of them describe as a lightning bolt pain. Other people can still experience stabbing pain, and we talked about the extreme sensitivity to touch. Now, small nerve fiber damage initially begins with symptoms occurring in both feet, usually in the soles. Then, as the condition worsens, these symptoms will spread up the leg. As the nerves of the calves are damaged, it's quite common for people to also to begin experiencing symptoms that now occur in the hands or in the arms as well. With peripheral neuropathy, I mentioned that the nerve damage can affect the motor, sensory, or autonomic nerves. 
but the most common nerve damage we see affects both the motor and sensory nerves, and that's why it's called sensory motor neuropathy. Peripheral neuropathy is a progressive debilitating condition, meaning it won't go away on its own, and it will continue to get worse with time. This condition seriously affects and can often destroy the quality of your life. Now, the question that I'm always asked is, can this be reversed? And the short answer is, most of the time, yes. Unlike the central nervous system, remember, that's the brain and the spinal cord, peripheral nerves have the full capability of being repaired and regenerating or growing new healthy nerve fibers. I want you to know this is not my opinion. This has been published in many well-respected medical journals like the Journal of Neuroscience and the British Medical Journal. On top of that, Harvard Medical School and Massachusetts General Hospital, which is ranked amongst the top 10 hospitals in the country, have researched and published articles on how peripheral nerves have the capability of regenerating and under what conditions that's necessary. Well, you might be asking yourself, so why is my doctor saying that nerves don't heal? Well, here's the reality. Statistics show that less than 1% of doctors in the United States know how to repair damaged peripheral nerves. And that's because much of this research is being buried and covered up by pharmaceutical companies. Hmm, I wonder why that is. Well, I'm glad you asked. The leading medications used to treat peripheral neuropathy are Lyrica, gabapentin, and Cymbalta. Lyrica sales annually earn $4.2 billion. Sales for gabapentin average $2 billion annually, and Cymbalta sales average $4 billion every year. After looking at these figures, do you think the pharmaceutical companies want you to know that you have alternatives other than their medications? Of course they don't. If you want more information on how nerves can be repaired, watch my video, Nerves Can Heal. I'll leave you a link below for you to follow after you finish watching this video. You'll be astounded at the eye-opening information. And by the way, folks, my information that I share with you is never based on my opinion. It's always based on hardcore research. Not to mention the fact that it's research that Dr. Copeland and I have instituted in our clinic to get incredible results with peripheral neuropathy sufferers. We've been successfully working with peripheral neuropathy patients for well over 15 years across the United States, as well as in some international countries like Singapore, England, Australia, Thailand, and the Netherlands, and that's just to name a few. Peripheral nerves can heal, and they can regenerate. Damaged myelin can be repaired and grow back, and peripheral nerve fibers can regrow. So think about this for a minute. Statistics show that there are tens of thousands of people, adults and children, who cut off their fingers or arms each year, and then they have them surgically reattached. After time for healing and physical therapy, these people regain their function. If peripheral nerves didn't heal, if they didn't regenerate or grow back, this would be impossible. So how does it possibly make sense that you can chop off a peripheral nerve and it can grow back, but when you damage it, which the body classifies as a lesser injury than cutting it off, it won't heal or regenerate? There's absolutely no logic in that. And as a matter of fact, the science backs up that these nerves do regenerate. They do grow back. But I want to be completely honest with you. Healing a peripheral nerve is no easy task. Why? Because nerves are the slowest healing tissues in the body. In fact, when injured or damaged during the repair phase, peripheral nerves only grow one inch per month. And if you have a really long segment of, of a nerve that's been damaged, it will take a long time for that nerve to recover. So the challenges lie in the fact that the process of healing this nerve is an extremely slow one, but not impossible. In fact, the Mayo Clinic has stated that it can take anywhere from eight months up to two years for peripheral nerves to recover. So patience is the key. Now that we've covered what peripheral neuropathy is 
and you have a basic understanding of the nerve function, you should understand that you don't have to settle for living with this debilitating condition. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. Make sure you watch my upcoming video on debunking neuropathy myths. It's an eye-opener. Blessings.